first presenter, we're going to clap her on up to the stage, is Sino Technologies. Hello everyone, I am truly excited to be here. Thank you all for coming. I know that without the help of my mentors and the One Million Cup staff, this pitch wouldn't be happening. But before I continue, I have a couple questions I want you to think about. What if the blind could travel the same as you or I? What if cardiac patients could identify a problem before it's too late? What if countless lives could be saved because the ambulance could get to the site faster? Good morning, my name is Gosha Sivaraja and I'm the founder and CEO of Sino Technology LLC. And today, I am here to tell you that all of those what ifs can become a reality. The mission of Sino is to use innovative, cutting edge technology to create devices that can improve the lives of people all around the world. Sino will make the world a safer place. Our first product is a device that helps blind and visually impaired individuals travel. For so long, blind individuals have been using a cane to travel. However, this possesses many problems. One major problem is that while using the cane, blind individuals don't have anything to alert them to any low-hanging objects that they might walk into, and so they often hit their heads. Another problem is that the blind individuals have to limit the pace that they are walking at because the cane can only detect objects one foot in front of the blind individual. That is why we created the Movement Aid for the Visually Impaired, or for short, the MAVI. The MAVI is a promising piece of technology that fixes all of these problems and improves the lives of blind individuals. It is a patent pending device and as you can see, it comes with three pieces. The first piece of the Mavi is attached to the waist of the blind individual, and the other two pieces are attached to their arms. Uh, the Mavi uses a process similar to echolocation to detect objects all around the blind individual. So the Mavi's main competitor is the standard white cane. However, unlike the cane, the Mavi can detect low-hanging objects. It can also detect objects 10 feet in front of the blind individual and comes with additional safety precautions which allows blind individuals to send their current locations to friends and family members with the simple push of the button. In the future, the Navi will also be coming with many more features. So we have visited several blind communities such as the Dallas Lighthouse for the Blind and we have taken a survey. According to the survey, a majority of the blind individuals feel comfortable using the Mavi and want to buy it as soon as possible. And all of them agree that the Mavi has a very affordable price. So before I continue, I want to show you a quick clip of what one blind individual thought of the Mavi. one of the many positive comments that the Mavi has received. And in order to give additional support to the blind community, Sino will be donating 1% of our profit to the National Federation of the Blind. So as you know, we are targeting blind individuals. And in Texas alone, there are over 662,000 blind individuals. That's a lot of lives that we will be improving. So we understand that the Mavi is new to the market. And in order to make the transition from using the cane to using the Mavi smooth and successful, we have created various services, including audio recordings, braille manuals, and explanation videos. We will also be setting up a call center personnel. And if the blind individual needs additional help, we can send over to them a trainer who knows how to work with the blind. 
So at the beginning of this presentation, you heard all of these what ifs. And now you understand that they will become a reality. At Sino, we are on a mission to help blind individuals walk just the same as you or I. So please, join with me in creating a solution for a better future. Thank you. Oh my god, I'm like so impressed. Yeah. And she did it in five minutes too. <laughs> You are so impressive. I love your presentation, and I know this is not on script, but I just have to say, she's in high school, and I mean, I've worked with someone so polished and prepared as you, and I really enjoyed it, and I wish you the best of success. Thank you. So now we're going to jump into Q&A, and there's no doubt that Yoshi is prepared for this. So we're going to have 15 minutes or 14 minutes, and um, if you have a so if you're replacing an actual cane, does the, does the, are there different sounds for different things? Like if it's coming from above, is there a different sound to let them know, hey, what, you know, duck? Or is there something that tells them size or, or how, how do they determine that without a cane? Okay, thank you for your question. So it, it, the Mavi uses buzzing tones and vibrations so that as you said, it does have different kinds of tones. So if it's something up above, it has a specific tone. And if there's anything on the ground, and if it's like a step up, then there's a specific tone. And then if there's like a hole in the ground or a ditch, then there's another tone. If there's anything in front of the blind individual, there's a vibration motor. And as I said in my uh, presentation, the Mavi can detect objects up to 10 feet away from the blind individual. And for the Mavi, there's an option where they can switch from 10 feet to 5 feet. So kind of like an indoor and outdoor option. And then the closer the object is, the more intense the vibration will be. Good morning. Very impressive presentation. Awesome product. A uh, couple of questions. I know you said it's patent pending, so I'm not sure if you're uh, allowed to um, share the information, but what technology is it based on? Like, uh, what's the whole product based on? Okay, thank you for your question. So as I said, it uses a process similar to echolocation, and it uses various sensors. And for the past two years, I've been working on creating the Mavi, and it uses unique software and hardware. And it's proven to work from the positive comments from the blind individual, as well as from the various awards that the Mavi has won from science fairs. Does that answer your question? Good morning. You did an amazing job, and especially for our high school students. I'm really impressed. One of the questions I have is, what is the learning curve of a person actually learning the system of how to use this product? That's a very good question. So as I said, I've been visiting several blind communities and allowing the blind individuals to test the Mavi. And they're very fast learners. And they actually picked this up within half an hour. And so they learn very fast. And the Mavi is also simple to use. And that helped. Can we see a demonstration? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one second. Oh, cool. <laughs> So I'll just be like showing you the side piece first. So when it turns on, it releases a buzzing tone to signify that it's on. So. One of the glitches that we're working on, but it starts buzzing and to say how much battery there's left in the Mavi, it will release another type of sound. So if there's, it releases three beeps, then that means there's only 25% left. If it releases one beep, then that means you have 100%. And that's how you can tell how much battery it has. Actually, let me try one more. And it's vibrating. You can't really hear it, but yeah. 
That's how I get hurt. Looking at engineers to try and fix them, but yeah. Ma'am, uh, with the uh, echolocation devices, usually there is a significant uh, false positive problem. Uh, is that something that you are uh, resolving in, the, in your device? I mean, things that basically you get back the you get back the signal from things that aren't really in the way so, for a variety of reasons, like the uh, like the angle or like the angle reflectors and things like that, which I mean, are all over the place, some shape or fashion. Yes, yeah, so I have noticed that problem with the earlier versions of the Mavi, and we have resolved it by uh, working with other sensors. And we've actually, for some of the Mavis, we instead of only putting one sensor, we put in two to detect the same object, so that we can use both of them to decide if there's actually something there. And it also reduces the noise level. I was also curious if you're using any sort of any sort of uh, image recognition uh, algorithms, I mean, learning things like that, I mean, to basically uh, filter the filter the noise from from the sensors. Yeah, actually, that's a good question. So um, what we're doing is right now it doesn't have any optical sensors, but in the future with the newer versions, <clears throat> with the newer versions of the Mavi. We will also be putting other camera-like sensors so that it can detect colors and objects and then relay it to the blind individual. Does that answer your question? Good morning, Gosha. Great job. I'm very impressed. Um, I have a question regarding the technology that's kind of threefold, so forgive me. It's just really fascinating. Um, is there any issues or concerns with pacemaker interference? And so it doesn't, it doesn't interfere or interact with other frequencies such as pacemakers, TVs, radio, or radios. Awesome. Is there any uh, interaction involved with a service animal? Because typically the blind has a service animal with them. That's a good question. So, that the, so the Mavi, it could, it could be used independently, but it can also be used with a cane or with a guide dog. So it can be used both ways. So is there an opportunity to maybe affix or attach the service animal with a Mavi device? That's one of the newer products we will be working on once we launch the Mavi. Okay, very exciting. And three, you mentioned something about um, GPSing or being able to find the blind person. Is there any uh, part of the technology that has some kind of emergency alert support? Um, we right now there's no emergency alert support, but how what it is is there's going to be app on the blind individual's phone as most of them carry smartphones, and so when they press that button, it sends a text message to a friend or family who's already put into the app where the blind individual is, and it's more like an additional safety precaution. Terrific job, you know I love it. And you too. Um, how many prototypes have you made and how are you dealing with the manufacturing side of it? Uh, this one is my third prototype, the black one on top. Actually, it's my fourth. But, and for the manufacturing, right now I've been using 3D printing to put them all together. And we are looking, we are looking for local manufacturers. And that was actually one of the questions, one of the things I was looking for from the community. Um, for manufacturing and then uh, injection molding for the Mavi. Where, where, where have you been doing the 3D printing? Uh, the library and occasionally we do have a 3D printing machine at our school, so I'm allowed to use that too. Thank you. Great presentation, by the way. Um, I have a question that's follow-up from there. I know that it's a little too early. Um, what's the price range you're thinking it's going to be when it's actually in production number one? And I guess this is going to be classified as a medical license, medical device. And do you think this will be covered under any health insurance, things like that? Have you thought around that? Well, I'll answer your first question first. Um, we are looking at a price range of around 400, and that is, I took a survey and all the blind individuals agree that this is a good price for them. It's 
it's high enough that I will be making a profit out of it, but it's also very affordable for them. So, and then for your second question, um, the Mavi is actually not a medical device. So I'm not sure if the insurance is gonna cover it, but we are looking at those options right now. Thank you for your question. Thank you. As far as echolocation, um, what made you go in that direction of echolocation instead of sonar that, that uh, dolphins use? Because I know that echolocation is used by you know, nocturnal animals like bats, mm -hmm. but in uh, sonar is used by dolphins. So what was the, the decision in doing echolocation other than sonar location? Well, as you said, I did get the idea from nocturnal animals. So I got it from bats. And I, um, at first I did, I searched into it, and from the sonar and echolocation, I thought that the echolocation would just work better from going off walls and detecting objects. And you've already started it, so outside of the manufacturing piece, what else can the community do to help you and your business? Well, okay, there's several things I'm looking for from the community, and I'll just list them out for you. So one, the, the Mavi, I will be needing help with marketing and advertising the Mavi and Sino. Uh, two, um, if any of you guys have contacts with blind individuals, doctors, or other engineers who could help me with future versions of the Mavi, if you could give me a warm introduction with them, that would be very helpful as well. Three, um, as I said earlier, I need help with manufacturing and injection molding, and I'm looking for a local company, so that would, that would be a tremendous help. Four, um, four, so I am new to the business world, and if any of you guys have any other feedback or suggestions that could help me with the Mavi, that would be very helpful, and I would love to get in contact with you. And five, um, currently we are looking to partner with other blind retails and online stores, and we want to make a contract where they sell the Mavi and advertise it. So if anyone could help help me with that, that would be very I would be very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. That was really impressive. She is significantly more put together than I was in high school. Probably even now, honestly. Um,